Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to switch up. We're going to be talking about the NBA. It's playoff time here. We've had a full eight game bubble season and it's gone surprisingly well. A lot of teams really surprised like the Phoenix Suns. They were phenomenal unfortunately. Still did not make the playoffs. Another team that did really well. The Trailblazers got themselves into the playoffs. They're now the eighth seed. A couple teams struggled but especially like the Pelicans. A lot of people thought they could do it. See you, Zion. We'll see you next year. We're going to be talking about the first matchups, first round matchups of these playoffs. They're set. Playoffs start this weekend. Joining me today, two big LeBron fans and smart basketball players, Brock Hayden, Noah Gallegos. Of course, I'm your host, Brent Hesse. What's going on today, guys? Doing great. Looking forward to these playoffs. I've been loving what the product that the NBA has been putting out. It's been incredible so far. The bubble has been a massive success. Uh, it's been super fun to watch, super fun to follow. The game last night between Portland and Brooklyn, one of the best games. I mean, maybe I'm being biased because I just watched it, but one of the best games I've watched to this day in the NBA. Extremely entertaining back and forth buckets between Karis LeVert and Damian Lillard. And now the Blazers have put themselves in a good situation to make it into the playoffs. Yeah, once again, the NBA really gets it right with this whole bubble. They've had zero positive tests of coronavirus up to this day. They've really done it right. They've kept it safe, and it's been an entertaining product this far. Now we're going to go into the playoffs. We're going to play a little game. We're going to talk about the key players of each matchup, and then we're going to predict how many games and who, which team is going to win each series in this first round. The loser of us three is going to have to endure a punishment in the next video so stay tuned to that it'll be fun hopefully it's not me but i can't wait to see we're going to go right to the east the one seed versus the eight seed it's your favorites in the east and your favorite for the mvp Giannis antetokounmpo and the milwaukee bucks taking on the orlando magic i'll start with this one i'll make this one very easy folks it's milwaukee in four they've struggled in the bubble but i expect a sweep here against orlando get them rolling into the semifinals Noah, what's your prediction in this series, and who do you think is going to be the key players if it's going to come down to it? I think this one is uh, as clear as day. I think Milwaukee probably sweeps this one. I have them going 4-0 against the Orlando Magic. The Orlando Magic aren't a very deep team. They don't really have a lot of star power. I think Aaron Gordon has a chance to prove himself um, in the bubble with a lot of people watching in a playoff series this year. But other than that, Orlando doesn't really have a lot of depth, and they don't have a lot of star power. I see Milwaukee, who's a really cohesive team, really put together, well chemistry team. They just roll over them, 4-0 Milwaukee. Yeah, I'm not going against the grain on this one. I'm going 4-0 Milwaukee. Jonathan Isaac going down was big for the Magic. They were looking actually really, really good this year. I mean, as good as the Orlando Magic could look without any true star power. They were actually a really good team this year, especially defensively. But I just don't see them winning a game here, especially without Jonathan Isaac. I think that Noah's right. Aaron Gordon could put together some good performances in the spotlight. I do see him being a spotlight type of guy, uh, but I just don't see him getting anything done here. Or that was remar that's remarkable. Yeah, I think that's a really good take about Isaac. He's a Florida kid. Went to Florida State here in the Orlando bubble. Maybe could have shown something. A young guy. He also has length, which you have to have to defend Milwaukee. Now Orlando missing that piece. We all predict 4-0 here in that series. So nothing's changed. We're going to go to the four first five matchup. So the winner of this will play most likely Milwaukee in the second round. And that's our home team, the Indiana Pacers versus the Miami Heat. Noah, I'll let you start with this matchup. Yeah, I'll take this one. I think this is the most intriguing matchup of the whole playoffs first round um, here in the bubble. Indiana has really gotten hot lately with TJ Warren leading the charge. He's been playing out of his mind since stepping into the bubble. He does have a small foot injury, which is something to watch entering round one, but we know the beef that him and Jimmy Butler have had in the past. Those two have went at it several times just this season. But Miami is a scary, scary team. They're good defensively when Jimmy Butler is healthy and they really lock down, and they have great perimeter shooters in Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero, who both know how to get it done from the three-point line. It's a close one to call, but I have this one going to seven games, Miami taking it four to three. Wow, that's a great analysis of that series. I think it's going to be close. I'll let Brock go with his prediction first, and I'll finish it up. 
uh, trying to get a competitive advantage on me here by uh, getting my opinion in first. We're so. going to rotate around. I went first <laughs> on the first series. We're going to keep it rotating. I'm just messing with you. Um, I'll easily win this competition anyways. I'm going to go with Miami in six. Uh, Pacers without DeMontis Sabonis. Uh, Miami's kind of in their head at this point. They've pretty much won all the big games between them. Jimmy Buckets has completely punked out TJ Warren multiple times now. Uh, I just think that mentally and both physically, uh, Miami's just in a better place than the Pacers right now. The Pacers will fight, but I think that Miami gets it done in six. I think that could definitely happen, but I'm going to go on the contrary here. If you recall, Indiana is a very feisty in the playoffs. Just a couple years ago, in 2018, they pushed the Cavaliers in the first round to seven games. Really should have won that series. Cavaliers end up going on to make the finals. This time, though, I think Indiana reverses their fortunes. Vic Oladipo still getting back to himself. I think that could be a big key, as well as TJ Warren's emergence. I expect Indiana to win this series, although I do think it's going to be very close. It's going to be back and forth all series long. Both teams are going to go on a couple runs in-game throughout a couple games, but I expect this one to be Indiana's. When it's all said and done, I'll take them in seven. We're moving on to the other matchups on the other side of the bracket in the East. We'll start with the three versus six, two of the Northeastern teams that seem to always face each other. It's the Boston Celtics, the three seed versus the Philadelphia 76ers, the six seed. Brock, you can start with this one. I think Boston's gonna absolutely roll this matchup. You got no Ben Simmons to defend the perimeter at all. Boston has an incredible perimeter with Tatum and um, the other- <laughs> Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown, yeah, Jalen Brown, Tatum. And who else is on that perimeter? Uh, Kimba. Kimba. Yeah. Kimba, all, those three together are an incredible perimeter, and that's going to be really tough for Philadelphia to defend, let alone just that amount of star power. You got three legitimate stars on that team, if not four with Hayward. Um, he's also kind of a perimeter guy, so just too many weapons there for Boston and too much for Philadelphia to overcome, especially without Simmons. What's your prediction in the series? My prediction for the series is Celtics in, it's either five or six. I'll give Philly two games because I do think Embiid's going to be out to prove something here. He's going to have to be the best player in this series by far if they want to even have a remote chance. He's going to have to score over 30 a night. I think a couple games he maybe goes off and they, they maybe take it to six here, but I definitely don't see this being a seven game series or a truly competitive series. Boston and six is Brock's prediction here. And you bring up an interesting dynamic with Philadelphia. Ben Simmons out of the picture after an injury here in the bubble. Embiid looks like he'll play this series, but it's Joel Embiid. Who knows how often or frequently he's going to play. Always on and off the court. And maybe a hot take, but I think that it might be better for Philadelphia to not have Simmons and Embiid on the same on the court at the same time. They don't really work well together. I don't think either, though, are that great of players. I expect Boston to win this series very easily. Embiid, and not a big fan. Boston, good team. Sixers, not a good team. Celtics in five. I do think this is an interesting ma uh, matchup when you really look at the, uh, the matchups here. Al Horford is playing his former team. That could give him some motivation. Uh, Joel Embiid's been banged up the last couple games of this bubble play-in series. Uh, he's got hurt with a wrist injury, and he's also hurt his knee at some point. So I think he's a little banged up going in. We already know Ben Simmons is out. But I do think Philadelphia will, will fight in a couple games. But ultimately, I do have Boston winning in five games, 4-1 to one Boston. I think Tatum, Jalen Brown, Kimball Walker, really just too much on the perimeter for the 76ers. So we're all pretty much in agreement. Some have Boston in five, some have Boston in six, but that game could make a big difference because we're all pretty close on predictions so far. Now we're headed to the final matchup in the East. It's the surprising two seed. The Toronto Raptors, the defending champions, even without Kawhi, have earned the two seed in the East. They will be facing the Brooklyn Nets, a depleted Brooklyn Nets team, but a team that's still done well in the bubble, even without a bunch of their really good players. I'll start with this one, Toronto, somehow continues to impress with limited players they have a phenomenal bench guys are stepping up every different night chris boucher one night norman powell another night we know the big ones lowry van fleet of course pascal siakam this is a very deep toronto team and they're not relying on just one player this year 
I'm not saying that that was a bad thing last year. They obviously won a championship, but it's a different dynamic. Nick Nurse, a phenomenal coach. I like Toronto in this matchup. I think Brooklyn will steal one game, but Raptors in five, and they're going to be looking much further down the road than just one series. I think the Nets are a team that needs to be talked about a little bit more. Even though they're missing their three biggest stars in DeAndre Jordan, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Durant going into the bubble, Dinwiddie's been out as well. They have managed to just fight, and they have a they have a scrappiness about their team that's really contagious to their other teammates. Chris Le Karis LeVert has been carrying this team on his back if you watch the Trailblazers game. Um, Toronto, though, is very, very good still without Kawhi Leonard. Uh, Pascal Siakam and Lowry have been really putting this team on their back. Van Fleet has stepped up this year. But I think the bubble is a good place for a team like Brooklyn who may not get that many home fans. It would be tough to play in Toronto. But at the bubble, I think they have a slightly better chance than they would if this was regular circumstances, even with all their injuries and players that are out. I still have Toronto winning, but I think Brooklyn takes two games. I have Toronto winning in six. I'm with Hussey here. I think two games is a little aggressive, even though I have seen a lot out of Brooklyn, and I wouldn't be ultimately shocked if that were to be the case. I'm going to go with Toronto in five. I think that Spicy P, Lowry, the veteran leadership of this team is going to be too much to handle for the young guys in Brooklyn. Uh, they do seem ready for the challenge, and I think that they're – I mean, I think to steal a game here is pretty significant without three without their three best players. But I think that stealing one game will be satisfying for them. They'll look forward to next season, and I think this one ends in five. They definitely have the potential. I mean, the Portland Trailblazers were playing for their lives, and Karis LeVert looked like he was the second best player on the floor pretty much the whole night, keeping them in that game. An impressive showing by him, a guy that kind of came out of nowhere, has become a really good player for Brooklyn. But we all agree it's not going to be enough. It just depends on how long it's going to take for Toronto to dispatch your Brooklyn Nets. We're heading to the West now. We're going to start at the top. It's the one seed, the Los Angeles Lakers versus the eight seed or the nine seed. We're not sure yet, but it's looking like it's going to be the Portland Trailblazers. So that's what we're going to go with here. It's the Lakers versus the Trailblazers in seven games. And it seems like, Noah, you're starting this one off. This one's really tough for me. Lakers are my favorite team. LeBron James, my favorite player. The Trailblazers, though, they've been fighting, and they're undeniable when you watch them. As far as Carmelo Anthony stepping up, Gary Trent Jr. has become a big piece to their, key, to their team. They got Nurkic back healthy, along with Whiteside coming off the bench, and we know about their two main guards, Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum. They really are a complete team. And without, if they were healthy the whole year uh, without COVID-19, I think they would have ended up being a five or four seed, which uh, really messes with the Lakers, especially since they don't know if that's quite going to be the team they're facing just yet as of this time. I think they do put up a fight. I think some of the games are close. But ultimately, I think Anthony Davis and LeBron James will really just turn it on, and they're going to be too much to handle for Portland. You'll have Zach Collins most likely guarding Anthony Davis, which is just – easy money for Anthony Davis all night or at least should be all series I do have Portland I'm debating them winning one or two games I think I think they just win one I think the Lakers find a way to figure it out and the Lakers win in five it's a pretty aggressive take I'm also a huge LeBron guy as Hesse stated before and a huge Lakers fan um, I've kind of followed LeBron around I'm definitely a LeBron bandwagon uh, self-admitted but I, I'm going to take the Lakers here, but I think that Portland is going to be far more competitive than what Noah said. I think that they're going to steal two games in this series. I think it's going to be LeBron getting back into playoff form and just game shape. You've seen he's been frustrated with himself a little bit here, trying to get back into game shape. And I think this is going to be a nice wake-up call and a growing experience going into the more competitive matchups in the future with a team like the Clippers, where this might be give them a little more battle testing before they head into something like that. I'm gonna say that this series is gonna go six games. I think that Anthony Davis is far too much for anyone on this court to handle that plays for this Blazers team. I don't think Nurkic, I don't think Zach Collins has any chance of stopping or guarding him. They were having trouble with Jared Allen on the boards the other night. These are two, or this is a totally different beast than Anthony Davis. You also have no one on the court that can guard LeBron James, however, in return, Los Angeles has no one, no answer for Dame Dalla or CJ McCollum. So they could struggle to defend these guards. 
And that's going to make for just an interesting battle of which more unstoppable duo can get there. And I'm going to take LeBron James and Anthony Davis to be that more unstoppable duo over almost anyone in the league if it comes down to that. So that's why I'm going to take the Lakers in six. These West matchups are very exciting. I think all eight of them have a, at least some intrigue. And me and Brock normally don't agree on a lot when it comes to the NBA, especially when it involves LeBron James. But we do agree on one thing. This series is going to end in six games. We agree on something different. The Trailblazers are going to take this series in six games, folks. I mean, it's simple as this. Neither team has a player that's in the top three in this bubble, okay? There are three players in this series that are between four and six in the bubble. The Lakers may have two of them. The Blazers may only have one, but the Blazers have much better talent surrounding their star player, Damian Lillard. I think that their guards will absolutely dominate against the Lakers guards. I think that the Blazers big men can hold their own a little bit better against the Lakers interior than the Lakers guards can against the Blazers. If Damian Lillard stays on this tear, he is playing out of his mind. This is the best three game stretch a player has had in a long, long time. And if he can roll that through the Grizzly series, continue this momentum, whereas the Lakers don't really seem to be clicking on all cylinders. This could be one where Blazers go up two games. They steal the first two games in this series. There's no home court advantage. They get two. LeBron and Anthony Davis try to focus up, but it's not enough. I think the one seed goes down in the first round here in the West, Portland to the second round. Oh, any, that's a really, any comments on that one? That's a really, I wouldn't say hot take because you're seeing it's the, it's the popular thing to do right now to pick against the Lakers here. Um, it's a sexy pick, I guess. People get excited by that. It's cool to talk about, but I think that you're really disrespecting Le playoff LeBron James here. Uh, if you recall in 2018, the last time that we saw him featured in the playoffs, he wore the Superman cape for a far worse roster and led them against teams that were probably as good or better than this Portland team. So I think that you'll see him throw on a bit of the Superman cape and he doesn't even have to do what he did with that team. He, could just, he still has Anthony Davis who, I mean, like you said, he's definitely a top five player in the bubble. I would argue that he's up there with everyone else. He's gonna be very motivated. He's never been to the championship. Uh, very motivated Anthony Davis calls for problems for everybody else. It's just a matter of getting Anthony Davis motivated, and I don't think he should have any problem getting motivated for these series. I think it's gonna be very similar to 2018 LeBron James playoffs. Whenever LeBron James plays a team in the West, he's going to lose four times. That's what happened in 2018. It's going to happen here in this series. LeBron James will lose four times to a Western team. It won't be the Golden State Warriors this time. It will be the Portland Trailblazers. That's a cute pick, I see, and that's why you'll be doing the punishment at the end of the day because you had to make the sexy pick. I think this matchup is very interesting, but I, what I really think it comes down to is defense. Portland Trailblazers are one of the worst defensive teams in this playoff slab. They give up close to 120 points per game, where the Lakers, when they want to clamp down, they've proven this year that they can really step up on the defensive end. They got some long guards that can help out. When LeBron James wants to play defense, he's one of the best defensive players of the year. And we know that Anthony Davis is up for discussion for DPOY this year. He's obviously one of the best defensive players. And then also off of that, we have JaVel McGee and Dwight Howard protecting the rim. I think it's just going to be tough to get to the cup if you're the Trailblazers. You just got to hope that you're hitting your perimeter shots. I do think that's a big concern. The Blazers' defense, definitely far from solid. But we're going out on a limb here. Is it likely? Maybe. Is it possible? Absolutely. We're moving on to the 4 versus 5 matchup. The winner of this will see the Lakers or the Blazers or the Grizzlies in the second round. And that is your Oklahoma City Thunder versus the Houston Rockets. A couple of guards have swapped teams since we've last seen them in the playoffs. What do you think about this matchup, Brock Hayden? I think this is my most interesting first round matchup. I think this matchup is going to be very close without Russell Westbrook the first few games. I think this one's destined to go seven. It's a series that no one's talking about. It's a sneaky series. OKC all year people have been looking down on them. They got young stars like Baisley and Shy Gilgis Alexander stepping up here lately. Especially Shy Gilgis is a really tough player being mentored by Chris Paul. Chris Paul is super motivated and ready to make it to the next round. He's always been hated on. He's one of the premier players in the league and overlooked as a superstar in this league. And he's always ready for the playoffs. So I think that he'll show out and they'll steal a couple early. 
and get a lead on Houston until Russell Westbrook can return. And it's a matter of how can he return. I think that he might return a little slow. I'm going to take OKC to steal this one in seven. That's a very solid prediction. I can see it happening. This is a great matchup. There's no doubt about it. Oklahoma City versus Houston. Chris Paul not happy that he was traded from Houston at the end of last season. Now they've got Russell Westbrook leading the point instead of Chris Paul. But Westbrook, we don't know his availability. We do know he will miss at least some games. We don't know how long that's going to go. Either way, though, I think the best player on the floor will be James Harden. And James Harden has may not shown out in the biggest of moments in the playoffs, but he's definitely done very well early on in playoff series. I think he's able to do it with this team. This is a very unique lineup that Houston is employing with just guards and slashers and shooters throughout their lineup, spreading the floor five wide, something that really we've never seen in the NBA to this extent. And they've done it successfully before the bubble and throughout the early portions of this bubble. They've done it very well at times. But it's basically whether they hit their shots or whether they miss their shots or how they're going to win games. I think they're going to be able to get it done, though. I'll take Houston in six. Of course, it starts with Harden, but there's a lot of other good players on this team. And you know the guy that always comes through in the playoffs, it's P.J. Tucker. Look for him to have a big series. I agree with Hesse. It's a very interesting matchup here. Um, I know when the season started, when Chris Paul got traded to the Oklahoma City Thunder, the experts gave the Oklahoma City Thunder a 1.6% chance of making the playoffs. That's and yet, crazy. here Chris Paul is. Chris Paul is a dog. He's a guy that you really don't want to go against when it's playoff time. And he wasn't even close to missing. They're the four seed. They're the Needless, four seed. They got in easy. Needless to say, a former teammate of a lot of these guys. So if you don't think he has a game plan coming into this to stop Harden and crew, then you're absolutely overlooking this team. He is going to do his best to slow Harden yeah, down. He yeah, he knows I, a lot about his former team. It's going to be a close matchup. Ultimately, I think what you have to look up in a Houston series is who the five is on the opposing team. And for Oklahoma City, that's Steven Adams. He's really not that big of an offensive threat. Houston lacks a big man. They play small. I don't think Steven Adams is someone that they're going to be able to feed and depend on to get bucket after bucket on this shorter Houston Rockets team. I do think they put up a fight, but I'm with Hesse. I think Houston gets this done in six. I think James Harden will be too much. The key players and the X factors are going to be the main key to this series for the Houston Rockets. People like Daniel House Jr., he's a big player. If he can make his shots this series, I don't think Oklahoma City stands a chance. If P.J. Tucker's knocking him down from the corner, it's going to be really rough for Oklahoma City to get away with the win in this series. I got Houston in six. We're going to go straight to another fun matchup on the other side of the West Bracket, the three versus the six. It's the Denver Nuggets with some budding superstars on this team versus the Utah Jazz, the team that got this whole entire lockdown started in the first place. But they're back with Rudy Gobert and, of course, our hometown hero, Donovan Mitchell, leading the way for the Jazz against this, against this Nuggets team led by Murray and Jokic. And now we've got Michael Porter Jr. coming, and he's playing to his potential. This is going to be another fun series, and one I would love to pick Utah. I would really love to pick Utah here, but I think the Nuggets are too much. I think it's going to go the distance, so I'm going to take the Nuggets in seven in this series. I really like Houston. I really like Denver as well. They're both solid teams. Denver, in the last three years that their head coach has been coach, has improved their record every single year. They continue to improve. They got a lot of young talent. Michael Porter Jr. is someone to watch up and coming. He's been a star for them lately. They do have a people, some people that are still at home. I believe Gary Harris is coming back into the bubble. He'll be available for playoffs. That's a big addition to their team. But Rudy Gobert on the other end is a scary matchup for someone like the Joker, Nokic, for Denver. I think Rudy Gobert could really give him problems. He's someone that has long arms and can defend out on the three-point line, but is also quick enough and long enough to defend on the interior. Donovan Mitchell has been playing really good in the bubble this far. It's going to come down to the role players like... Um, Jordan Clarkson, he's going to be a big player in this series. And no Bogdanovich, too. No Bogdanovich is huge. It's going to have to be Jordan Clarkson that steps up. Um, I think it's going to be a close series, but unlike Hesse, I'll actually take the Jazz here in seven. Wow. I think for this series, it's all about if Denver is going to be able to find their identity. You can see that they clearly have the talent to be a contender. There's no doubt about it. I think from top to bottom, they're the most talented team in the entire league, especially with young talent. 
They're, they have a flourishing young talent. Michael Porter Jr., you got tons of guys that can come in and just get buckets, but they just have no real identity or no idea how to put that talent together cohesively and win yet. However, I think that Utah is an even bigger disaster. They're having a lot of team chemistry issues. I'm taking Denver here in six. I think they get it done. I think that Jamal Murray is too clutch. He's going to show up big time. He's been huge all throughout his career in the playoffs. So I think getting him back just in time and getting back up to speed for this series is going to be big. Donovan Mitchell will steal a couple games single-handedly. The rest of that Jazz roster just doesn't do much for me. Obviously, Gobert is a nice piece, but they just can't get this series done, I don't think, against Denver. They have way too much talent for them, and I think they take it in six. Now we're going to the final matchup of the first round. We've covered seven. We've got one to go. It might be the least interesting matchup in the West, even though it includes two pairs of superstars, really. You've got on one side for the Clippers, Paul George and the defending MVP, defending finals MVP, Kawhi Leonard, versus two young stars, Kristaps Porzingis, and of course, Luka Doncic for the Mavericks. So four really phenomenal players in the series, but I think the one that's being talked about least out of the four matchups in the West, and that's just because the Clippers have so many other great pieces. This one's easy for me. I think the Clippers are gonna take this one in five. They're getting back a lot of good players. Patrick Beverly, Lou Will. Hopefully we'll see the Louisville boy Montrez Harrell here soon. This Clippers team has a lot more to do than just win the first round matchup. And I think Dallas might be the weakest team of the eight in the West if we're including the Portland Trail Blazers and not the Memphis Grizzlies. So I'll take the Clippers in five. This is where I disagree a lot. I think Dallas is a really good team with Luka Doncic and Porzingis. And it's gonna to be tough for LA. It's not easy for a bunch of players on your team to be out and then get reintegrated with the team and just magically still have that chemistry. As we know, the LA Clippers haven't played a lot of games with their true starting five playing as a cohesive unit this season. There's been a lot of injuries. There's been people out during this bubble period. Just throwing those players back in the mix won't be easy for Doc Rivers to do. It's gonna to be tough and Luka Doncic Watching him play, he is phenomenal. He makes the right play every time. He finds people on the perimeter. If he can't find someone, he will score. He's getting better as a three-point shooter as the season progresses, and he really has a lot to handle. And if Seth Curry can step up in this playoff matchup and hit a few threes each game, I think that they will give the Clippers a little problem. I still think the Clippers are too talented to lose this series, but I do have the Dallas Mavericks winning a couple games, which will make Mark Cuban happy. And I have the Clippers winning in six. Well, you got Tingus Pingus and Luca, and that's all real cute, but the rest of that roster doesn't do much for me. The Clippers are extremely deep. I'm gonna have the Clippers winning this one in five. I think that Luca has a big game, one big game that everyone talks about, and it's gonna be so crazy. It might be at the start of the series, it might be toward the end, and people won't get as excited. Maybe they can tie it up 1-1, but I think this series is over in five. I'm actually going to unfortunately agree with Hesse here, which like he said, doesn't happen very often, but unfortunately for some reason today, we're firing on all cylinders. So I'm going to go with Hesse here. The better team wins in five. There you have it. That's our predictions for the first round of the NBA playoffs starting very soon at a local channel near you. We're going to have everybody's picks on the screen so you can see what our predictions are for the first, first round matchups. And whoever is the furthest from the truth, we'll be seeing them in the next video. They're about to get popped one way or another. Good luck to all players. Any final thoughts here? I think that really sums it up for the first round. There's a lot to look forward to in this uh, NBA bubble. They've really done it right. Playoffs should be really, really exciting. It's an odd time of year, but nonetheless, just as exciting. If you don't watch NBA, which I would assume if you're watching this video, you're probably a big NBA person, but man, Anyone who's not watching this right now is missing out. I see my parents and people skipping out on games, and I feel like if you were to tune in for some of these games and just watch one, you're immediately hooked by the product that's being put out right now. The number of stars in the NBA right now, the number of storylines is just incredible. It's the only thing on. Why would you not be watching it? It's the greatest time. If you're not appreciative for sports after everything that's happened at this point in time, I don't know what to tell you. I'm fired up. We're all fired up, folks, so go out there, watch the first round games, and we'll see you next time right here. See you, folks.